In this video, we'll navigate to our first assignment. And uh, over on the, uh, the left, you have the, uh, the assignments in the sidebar. Also in our list of get to work, we have click assignments on the left sidebar, or you can click the blue assignments here and it will take you there as well. Uh, due dates are from the beginning of the semester, so since um, we probably have a, an early start, um, just plan accordingly and uh, turn in the, uh, the assignments as you get them done. So when we click on assignments, the first assignment is introduce yourself. The due dates are not uh, hard dates, they're recommended. There's no uh, penalty because of possible staggered start. Uh, there's no penalty for um, for a late um, uh, turn in. Uh, if you stay on track and turn in these items as uh, as you go, it'll make the end of your semester much easier. So assignment one, and then A one, assignment one reflections. Uh, as I mentioned before, there'll be a um, a group for the uh, the assignments, and then. Um, um, in the discussion, you'll have reflections, and you'll be able to see everybody's comments and reply to, or um, in, in a sense, give me feedback of what uh, what things you struggled with and what was working well for you. So when we click on assignment one, there is the instructions, and read the instructions all the way through. Um, pages, you may have to make an adjustment um, depending on which version of the book you get. Uh, we're going to um, sketch the views uh, one through eight. Each part is, well, that would be yeah five points a piece. Uh, drawing three, when I looked at it, has a counter board that's not, not called out, so we'll use a 716 socketed cap screw. Drawings uh, one, three, six, and eight are in inches. Two, four, five, and seven are in metric. That's going to uh, play a part in uh, making selections and changing units. Uh, use the labels in the upper right for uh, of each frame and either uh, put your initials before it or after it to give it a part name. All right, so that takes us through the, uh, the assignment portion. And then when you click on CA1, this, um, this page has um, a little more room on the, the graphics area. Um, at the top you'll see the... Um, uh, annotation and the page number. Uh, the first go around here is um, we're just going to concentrate on sketching. So the um, uh, items that we're putting in here, the front view, the right view, and then we are to create a view. Well since as we go through the process and create those sketches we're going to um, then go in and make a solid and after we've made the solid then we can put the the solid into a drawing and it will create the top view for us so in our sketching we're really only responsible for this front view and the right view because it's going to provide enough information in subsequent views we have the right view and the top view as long as we have enough information there to generate our geometry then we can go back and uh, out of the drawing have it produce the missing view. Okay, so we're not going to sketch the ones that say view here. We're going to let the, the tool do that work. Um, just real quick before we get into the um, end of the sketching, taking a look at these uh, items. Um, notice that we are in fractional, uh, decimal, um, uh, decimal units, and some of these will correspond to fractional. Uh, we're in uh, metric on some of those, and uh, one of the things that I touched on last time is the units, and I added this, um, this scale of 0 to 1 inch by 60 fourths as a slightly larger. So I don't recommend memorizing all 60 fourths, but you should be able to recognize an eighth of an inch, 3 sixteenths of an inch, um, quarter of an inch. And then as you're going through, the maybe uh, 530 seconds is something that will come up. 330 seconds will come up fairly often. Uh, maybe even 730 seconds and 930 seconds. And then 516. 
Um, and then also notice that numbers recur as you're going through the process. One, two, five, one, two, five, three, seven, five, three, seven, five, three, seven, because they're all based on um, our our units of a uh, thirty second of an inch or uh, 0 0.015625 for a sixty fourth. Those decimals are going to repeat fairly uh, fairly common. So that's kind of a, a memory aid to help you um, uh, kind of place where those uh, those items are. The other rec uh, recommendation is that you be able to do some basic conversion to metric or have a, a sense of where the metric falls in. And for that, I'm going to go back up to, let's see if we can zoom up on this a little bit. Control plus. Okay, we'll get back to the threads. <coughs> so we'll get it more into the metric thread forms, but this first conversion uh, was always told 1 divided by 25.4. Well, I really don't visualize 25.4 anything. Um, we we're taught in, in inches and um, you know, 16th of an inch, 32nd of an inch. I have a kind of a visual related to that. And so when you say there's 39.37, which would be the um, uh, inches in, a, in one meter, and then we divide the one meter by a, a thousand to get millimeters. So the 39.37 divided by a thousand is 0 0.03937 equals one millimeter. Right, so that corresponds to about 40 thousandths of an inch. Oh, and then um, if we do the uh, the reciprocal, you get the 25.4. So those numbers are are um, related in in that fashion. And then notice that you have to go out several decimal places, but keep in mind that if you're talking really large numbers, um, that fifth or sixth decimal places comes to play a role. And in scaling. Um, in times it'll be uh, maybe out to the millionth place, but um, it can uh, can vary. So the takeaway here is that at 40 thousandths of an inch, if I have over here an M6 uh, or a 6 millimeter um, measurement, I can multiply that by 40 and get 240. Well, that's 240 thousandths, and that's real close to 0 0.023 or 0.2355. Uh, two two three six that is the actual, All right? So that's putting me within five thousandths of my my finished number. So when I do these um, do these math do this math, 0 0.0156 actually is pretty close to 0 0.4 millimeters, and then half a millimeter kind of fits in here. Nothing really aligns with the 031. We could do a conversion for it, and then one millimeter tucks in between. Uh, my 132nd and 364, so fairly small numbers. As we continue to go up, 078, pretty close to 2 millimeters. And then eighth of an inch, between eighth of an inch and 764 is 3 millimeters. Getting closer to the 156, uh, 157 number is our 4 millimeters. And then at 197, so Pretty, pretty square in between the 3 sixteenths and the 13 sixty-fourths, we're going to find 5 millimeters. And then at 15 sixty-fourths, 236 is going to be 6 millimeters. 7 millimeters we don't encounter too awful much, but uh, I want to say it's 276, so it's in here between the 17 sixty-fourths and 36. So these are recurring numbers as well, and if you kind of relate them where they, where they fit in, uh, eight millimeters at five six, just over five sixteenths, and then we'll jump to um, well, we'll go ahead nine millimeters in here at uh, three fifty four, and just over three eighths. Well, right here at twenty five sixty fourths, we're going to have the point three nine three seven for ten, and it just goes through that process of uh, if I can get close to a number. Um, so 8 times um, 40 would give me 320. Again, I'm within 5 thousandths of my, my finished number. It gives me a decimal number to write for, and I can go back and forth between those numbers. All right, so you don't have to memorize all of them, but just familiarize yourself and try to, um, try to include those in your uh, workflow and in your, your practice. All right, so let's navigate back to the uh, to the assignments. We're going to come back to that um, um, 
to the um, hotkey list. All right, so looking at the uh, the first parts, our assignment one is just to do the sketches, and I don't have any problem with you uh, performing the sketches, going through the sequence, and then creating the solids, and then creating the drawings, and turning all of that in as once at once, so that we actually have are going to have three uh, assignments tied to this um, to this page of um, of sketches of this page of drawings. So. Um, when you're looking at these, uh, we're given the, the front view, the right view, um, you know, depending on the, um, the layout. And um, we want uh, to stay in that, uh, that group. When you're designing the rest of uh, these isometric drawings, there, is a, there are going to be techniques to uh, align it to uh, the coordinate system to make it look exactly like. The picture on the sheet, um, but it's not 100% critical. If you start on the front plane and it should have been on the top plane, the assembly is not going to care. The drawing is not really going to care. It may be an extra step down the line that you have to perform to put it into some orientation uh, to make it um, to make it more usable. But for all practical purposes, you'll work into and build up to those. Um, uh, to that visual skill of deciding where you want your part oriented in that 3D space. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to fly this out, maybe. Find another spot for it. And um, I have uh, SolidWorks 2018. Uh, so the issue that I had at the end of the last video with uh, my, my zoom keys, and my screen is now zooming out again, there we go. Okay, I guess I shouldn't mess with it. <laughs> the um, uh, batteries on my keyboard um, had uh, had gone out, so new batteries, and I should have all of my rotations and those types of things going on. All right, so when you're looking at the splash screen, the software is waiting for you to um, tell it something to do. And I think I want to pause here real quick because there's something that goes on in the startup that I need to show you real quick. So I'll pause and I'll be right back. All right, so I moved my uh, record screen down to the, the taskbar. And as we come across here, when you're launching SolidWorks, there's going to be this little checkbox that's your resource monitor. And in the resource monitor, it may say up, may, may come up and say, oh, check your uh, run of systems, diagnostics, uh, graphics, and subscription notifications. You can right click on that uh, icon, expand out the arrow, right click on the icon, and check both of those items that if you're getting those messages, it will reduce it. It may not eliminate it, but at least it will, uh, you won't see them all of the time. Okay, so another pause. All right, and then I also uh, mentioned the, uh, the graphics. I um, uh, experimented, I turned on, let me reduce, uh, minimize that. So when we launch, if you have a secondary graphics processor, try the high performance, try the integrated. I went back to the integrated, and we're going to see how it, um, how it performs uh, during this video. Um, so you're, you're kind of just feeling out the system at this point, getting, getting settings, learning to navigate. There's not, um, you know, we're, we're right here at level one at the foundation material. And um, just going through that, um, that very basic process. All right, so again, I expanded out the, uh, the little arrow and I hit the push pin so I would have my pull downs. So we can do file new. One of um, the things that you'll want to pay attention to, whichever way you navigate through the, uh, through the software, is the, the hotkeys, the control N, uh, the control O for out, uh, open. Uh, that also brings up the, let's see, I saw it and then I lost it. The, uh, the screen that, the screen that comes up at the, uh, the very beginning when we launch is called, I don't think it's going to be under, those are all of the toolbars. Um, there's a start screen somewhere.
Oh, that was um, this one, the Welcome to SolidWorks screen, Control and F2. All right, so if you want to use this screen, keep in mind um, we did that, um, uh, the new button and went to the novice and the advanced list. This has the three novice, the standard default. There's not a lot of um, modifications here, and I really recommend that you don't modify the default um, standard uh, templates, the document templates that come with the software. Keep those as something that you can always go back to and build up and have as a starting point. If we go into advanced, it's going to take us right back to that uh, advanced um, window anyway. Um, and we haven't opened anything, we haven't accumulated any history, so there's no recent documents or recent folders. And then further into the recents. And then um, SolidWorks resources on uh, online. And then any alerts, so SolidWorks 2019. Um, I'll probably, I, I usually try to d download either pre-release 1 or pre-release 2 so that we can start looking at and there'll be a little bit of crossover in the fall of this is what you can expect from 2019 if you're seeing it in a commercial environment. All right, so it is, okay, so there's the arrow keys. There is supposed to be a little checkbox, or when it comes up at the very beginning, there's a checkbox in the lower left corner that says don't show this again. I will probably do that at some point because I'm not used to this welcome screen. It's not part of my workflow. Um, so again, if it's uh, something that um, you will utilize and can um, navigate through, then uh, just because I don't use it doesn't mean you shouldn't. So um, experiment, find out what is, um, is working for you, and go with it. And then I have a lot of old bad habits or old good habits, depending on how you look at them, that I'm probably not going to break anytime soon. They work for me, and um, you know it'll, it'll be a good basis for you, but push buttons and see what they do. All right, so to get into our part file, starting to um, uh, set up for the sketch, I have standard templates. Well, these are still pretty much the uh, the same defaults. We haven't created a custom template yet. So at this stage, it would be the same as on the welcome screen hitting hitting part. In a couple of uh, lessons, when we create our inch and we create our metric uh, part file and set things up the way we want to see them, um, then this will become a little bit more useful. All right, so we have the part. We hit OK. And from that uh, that last video, that's taking a little while, from that last video, we'll want to do a quick comparison. So I set as my default ISO and inch pounds and seconds. Um, things that I wanted to see, so edit document units. And the document units went back to two decimal places, so I'm going to go to three. And I want three, even though the drawings are in two decimal places, um, I really want to stay with, with the three, um, just as a, a matter of course, is um, to be thinking in those, um, those standard units. And then we'll show the origin. And again, the origin is so that I can rotate. And then if I did this right, control is acting as a pan, control in the middle mouse button. And alt is rotating about the, uh, the view, alt in the middle mouse button. Okay, so let me um, go to through the control keys. So control one is the front view, and it changes to the front. Control two goes to back, control three left, control and four is the right, control and five is the top, control and six is the bottom, control and seven is isometric, control and eight is normal too, so you have to make a selection. So if I were to select the front plane and hit control eight, then it would go back normal to the front plane because that was the basis of my selection. All right, so we said that we wanted instant 2D and instant 3D turned off. 
guess one more thing that we could check real quick is the little arrow next to the uh, to the options I'll go into the add-ins and once these are set and I've, I've checked them a few times I'm not gonna do this every time they should stay I just want to verify that the cam isn't loading it's not active we will come back to, to those later so for our add-ins all of the uh, the higher end uh, functions uh, add-in functions and then um, some of the um, items that uh, go in the group we're pretty much going to turn all of those off all right so inside of the options and let me center this on the screen a little bit better is let's see we're going to have the feature manager and my preference and again some of these will stay modal I don't use the uh, the history uh, history tab so I'm going to change that from a show to a hide and then sensors uh, we use those off and on but again not don't use them enough and because of the um, uh, 1280 by 720 screen resolution or record resolution uh, I want to kind of maximize that uh, feature tree so one things the one thing that I will start early and we will do often is refer to the solid bodies and solid bodies is a technique uh, where <coughs> um, you can have uh, disjointed bodies or bodies that are, aren't connected and they will uh, they will show up under the solid bodies flow. It's also called master model or multi body parts. So when I do that, I change the solid bodies folder, and I have, have uh, put the um, the sensors and the history uh, away for now. Okay, so going across the top, we have the features, the sketch, the evaluate. You may have a different uh, set sequence up here. So let's um, right-click in the tab. The, the one very serious recommendation, so uh, put, it, put it pretty high on the list, is do not uncheck all of these. Leave at least one. So you're always going to have features. You're always going to have sketch. You may not be using surfaces. If sheet metal's turned off on, you may want to turn it off. Uh, we really don't need the uh, the dim expert turned on. I don't need the uh, the add-ins. So just as an example, I'll go ahead and turn off the add-ins, and we may start with the uh, model-based definitions and dim expert uh, early on uh, to kind of relate those to the drawing and how they will um, they'll play out through the uh, the rest of the process. All right, I think I'm uh, I'm ready to start sketching. So let's fly the um, the geometry back in for a quick review. And part of this is deciphering, but we have the, the software uh, is going to, to help us do that. So on the front plane, we are going to make a sketch just like this. And we're going to use these sketches uh, to, to drive this geometry. So it's a little bit different. We're going to do... Uh, two or three strategies to kind of illustrate and then you'll get to pick uh, the one that you're you're most comfortable the one that makes the most sense all right if we go to all the trouble of generating this geometry then I pretty much want to utilize that geometry geometry so these in effect become layout sketches that are going to um, help me further down the line all right so on the front plane we'll draw this kind of uh, kind of shape I'm thinking zero zero is a nice convenient spot either at this corner or this corner. Doesn't um, doesn't really matter. It will matter a little bit more how I align it to the um, to the right plane, and um, so we'll make that decision as we go. There's nothing that um, uh, has to be you know 100% decided uh, right now. So. As we go through the process, it will evolve and we'll make choices um, as, uh, as everything unfolds. So front plane, sketch. All right. And that is one of my habits, and I would like you to adopt it uh, fairly quickly, is the right mouse button. 
context uh, menus are going to be the shortest, fastest way. So since I did that uh, semi-automatically, I'm going to go ahead and close, discard changes, and exit. The other option is that if you click on sketch, and again, if you're going to use the pull-down arrows, let's see, pull-down arrow, stay away from the 3D sketch. We're just going to do sketch. And with the sketch, it's going to ask you which plane. And I'm holding down the middle mouse button and rotating. And it's going to ask you which plane you want to select. And then it will take you into the front plane. Notice the origin went from blue to red. And that is one of the indicators that I am now in a sketch that it's now active to... Um, um, to, uh, to start with our geometry. Also on the status bar, we have gone to editing sketch two. Previously it said editing sketch one. And the current status of the sketch is that it's under defined. Our end game is to get a fully defined sketch. All right, so we'll kick that one out. And if you want to stay in the first sketch, that's, uh, that's fine. This will be for illustration more than anything. So pre-selecting and, and then selecting, um, and let's see, there was, as I selected, notice that we got kind of a, um, a pop-up. I didn't even have to write mouse button. I guess that's, a, like I said, an old habit. So if I click on the sketch there, that will take me in the same as the first uh, example. If I pre-select for the front plane and hit the sketch, then it's going to take me directly in. All right, so let's draw this as lines, and then we'll kind of build into um, to rectangles. Um, you know, the, the, the geometry, at least for a layout sketch, doesn't have to look exactly like the sketch. We can add additional things. And again, my fingers are getting ahead of my mouth. So as I click and draw, or drag the other uh, line, then we're going to start to see some of the visual clues showing up on the screen. So I'm going to hit Control Z to back out of that. So up on the, um, the Sketch uh, Command Manager toolbar, I'm going to go into Line. And when I click on the line, notice that there on, on the arrow there is Line, Center Line, and Midpoint Line. We'll get to those. Uh, midpoint line was added last year, so I haven't used it a lot, but it is um, is available. Um, notice that when we go into the line command then, we are ready to insert a line. The property manager comes up automatically. So we're going to go as sketched if you want to force horizontal, vertical, or an angle. And then the options for construction, infinite length, or midpoint make those adjustments. So if you notice the first go around I did a snap directly to the origin and the little yellow box comes up and says you are going to get a geometric relation, a relation or a constraint depending on terminology um, at that location. If I just draw this line out here in space then the yellow box that pops up is telling me that this line is going to be horizontal as opposed to vertical or horizontal as we come around or vertical as we go once more. All right, so once I get that in position, it's giving me approximate length. I really don't care about that approximate length. We're at 2.38, so let's see, how, how much time is it going to take me through 2.394? Okay, close enough. I'm not going to try to dial that in exactly. Uh, if I have a, a basic scale, I may um, uh, get it close, but most of the time I draw the line, I put the dimension on it, and then it comes into, um, into scale uh, automatically by uh, the, the background tools. All right, so right cli clicking and hitting select or hitting escape on the keyboard, that exits the line command. Because I am telling this, uh, telling the software that I want to the commands to be continuous, I'm going to draw lines until I get through drawing lines. I'm going to draw circles until I get through drawing circles. I'm going to have to exit to um, uh, get out of that command. So let's see. There is a select tool up here. And again, that is, um, I can click on select. I can e escape. 
and that will let me out of the command where I can right click and notice there's not a select here because I'm not in a command. Alright, so little green box is helpful at this point, but when we start accumulating geometry, little green boxes are going to get a, an annoying. So if I click on that little green box, let's see, will it come up? Okay, maybe a double click. And there is the horizontal relation. And it's allowing me to move. All right, so I have the line and I'm clicking on the object line as opposed to an endpoint because there is not enough definition. This, um, this line is able to rubber band and we're able to move it um, in, uh, in a few directions, but not off of horizontal. All right, so the second relation that I'm really looking for is to grab the endpoint, and then as it comes over to the origin, I see that uh, yellow box, and the symbol is telling me that that is coincident. So as we're going through that process, you're going to see icons show up on the add relations. You're going to see those... Uh, little boxes, they're going to have an existing relations to uh, to correspond to. And that's one of the visual clues that you'll need to uh, to start um, uh, picking up on. Alright, so I'm going to... That was my first line. So first line is going from here to here, 2.38. I'm not really concerned about dimensions at this point. Uh, we'll come back to those, so I'm going to draw a vertical line, and we're going to make this continuous. Uh, I guess this is also a good time to bring up the difference between the uh, the click-drag, which is what I typically do, and the click-click. So in the line command, uh, a click-drag is holding down the left mouse button and dragging to some distance, whereas the click-click is to click, let go, click, let go, click, let go, and then this end point's going to be out here somewhere. Click and let go, and then click and let go, and I'm going to end the chain, and notice I'm still in, well, maybe not. It picked up, uh, it picked up something. Uh, I think my mouse has a little bit of wear on it, so I'm probably going to see some uh, uh, some double clicks that I didn't intend. All right, so picking up, I'm now going back to the click drag, and I prefer the click drag. All right, so here's a situation where I'm getting an icon. Um, that little symbol, that little snap symbol, is telling me the, where the midpoint of that vertical line is. All right, so if I go to that, it's going to apply a midpoint relation to the endpoint of the line that I'm drawing. I don't want that, so it can be coincident, which is fine. And um, we have the horizontal, and, and it's just watching for those, um, those little, again, visual clues that are coming up. Some of them are there for, seems like, a split second depending on how long you're holding the mouse button or how long you're um, staying engaged in that command. All right, so I'm going to pick up the endpoint, and this is actually a concentric symbol, but it is making the endpoints um, coincident, uh, you know, technically, yeah, concentric. It just um, gives me that, that clue. So here's a double. I'm going to be coincident to the line, and the line's going to be vertical and I get those those two results. Uh, my next line will start over here and my button mouse button didn't uh, didn't pick it up so maybe there we go maybe I need to check the batteries in my mouse next <laughs> alright so again bringing it over to where we see those relations it's coincident it's horizontal it's coincident to the line and that gives me enough geometry to take a step back and look at what we've done. All right, so there's more here. I could have just drawn the perimeter, and that would have been 
one extrusion. I could have uh, drawn the, uh, the, the right plane geometry and extruded it out some distance. So a big portion of this and the, the visualization is going through that process to build these geometries up and, and make good decisions as you go. All right, so our dimensions then, one more fly-in. <clears throat> we have the 2.38, we're going to come back to the hole. The overall is 4.26, and then the depth 1.62 and 0.76. We can pull the 0.5 and the 0.5 off of the right drawing, and then utilize those relations possibly utilize those relations in the uh, the next um, the next sketch our right plane sketch all right so to apply the dimension we're going to go into smart dimension and we said that the first line was 2.38 so I click on the line and then let go of the mouse button and then click again and then it's going to come up and ask me, what do you want that dimension to be? 2.38. And then the next line, 1.62. So click, click. And 1.62. And we have an overall. So I missed that one, so I'm just going to escape. And notice that I picked the object lines, and that gives me a direct linear distance. Since we have this step, I'm going to need to go from object to object to get an overall. So that one's 4.26. <clears throat> and then in the right view, we'll go ahead and take, um, take those dimensions. So 0.5, and then my overall is 2.5, and something happened there, 2.5. All right, so as I'm changing these dimensions, they're updating, and then we have 0.5 from the top and something disconnected. All right, so I gotta figure out what's uh, what I'm telling it to do here. Oh, to the step, all right, so point, point 0.76. I think my mouse is clicking out. I would, usually this would stay highlighted in blue. I think my mouse is uh, messing with it a little bit there. All right, and then from that line to that line is 0.5. That's an interesting number, too. I'm going to have to go back and watch the video now and see what I'm telling this to do. All right, so one of the uh, the buttons that we have up here is to reverse the sense, and that puts in a negative temporarily to bring it back to the other side of the line. So I may have to change my mouse here. All right. So in that process of just putting verticals, coincidences, handful of dimensions, we've gotten this sketch to go fully defined. All right. And then we'll go back to sketch. And to pick up a circle, I pick on the, uh, the circle tool. It has two options, either a circle or a perimeter. Three points on the perimeter of the circle will define. Use that one on occasion, but for the most part, center point and the radius are going to give you the geometry. So the click drag will give me the sketch geometry. Click click will do basically the same thing. And we see the first indications of the shaded sketch contours. So I'm going to click on the perimeter and that dimension is 0.75. To place it, I'm going to stay with the perimeter because the, the perimeter or the circumference of the circle has more functionality than going to the center point. All right, so if I go to the perimeter 
and then go to the top line. We'll drag off to the side and that becomes 1.26. And then it's dimension from the end, so from the line to the perimeter of the circle, 1.26. So even by picking the perimeter, it is going to the center point. The advantage here is that if I need a min or max condition, so the min would be to this quadrant, the max would be to that quadrant, I have that capability with the circumference and I don't have it with the, uh, the center point. Alright, so that's my, my sketch. Have all the geometry in there, that's looking pretty good. We go ahead and accept. And those little green dots are starting to annoy me, so we will probably turn those off here pretty quick. Alright, so again I can kind of rotate over, see what I have, get a visual. Uh, control 1 to bring it back to, to the side. Alright, so control 3 then puts me on the left. And we want to be in the right view. Notice it's warning me, document has not saved for 20 minutes. That is set in the options and you have the option of creating a backup. Um, saving, uh, auto saving a recovery file or um, just having it um, come up and warn you. So I'm feeling pretty confident that uh, I'm not going to have any problems. So opening up the, uh, the sketch on the right plane, we'll go, uh, go to that route. And then I'm going to reuse, so I hopefully this illustrates a little better, rotating over from the origin to the end point, and then notice it goes to coincidence. So I don't even have to put that dimension on. And then I'm getting a, a yellow line that is an inference line. So because I've switched over to that isometric or because um, there's a little bit more geometry, that, isom um, that in inter um, inference line is telling me where horizontal is in relation to my screen, or horizontal and vertical. Alright, so I'm going to bring that out some distance, and then we can go up, and even though I'm not pulling that line directly, I am going to come across, and then we'll go up, and back over. And the notch. Okay, and then the little blue inference line, I let go too quick. The little blue inference line shows me that I'm horizontal to the to the back. Alright, so again the shaded contour and uh, sketch contour is giving me um, giving me that indication. I'm gonna sketch the uh, the step and then Let's see, the other step that comes back to here. Yeah, maybe that one didn't pick up. Let's see if it drags. All right, so our best indicators for, um, for a diagnostics tool is just to be able to, um, to grab something that's in blue and drag. All right, <clears throat> so... I thought it went coincident, it went coincident to the vertical line, but not to what would be the horizontal line in the adjacent plane. So here's where we're going to start select, control select. Holding down the uh, the control button, and then the, the, um, the first point was already selected when I was dragging it around. Control select, and then apparently I clicked out too fast. Try that again, make sure I get it. Control select. And then I'm actually not getting a relation. So I'm expecting that to be able to go coincident. And if I go to the line, Okay, so since the points don't want to uh, cooperate, how about a line and the point? 
and still did not get my relation. Oh, that was the add all duration, or see all of the relations. I want to add a relation. And I'm just going to see if it'll go in through this way. And again, I don't know if it's because of my mouse. All right, so on the add relations property manager, selecting the line, selecting the point, that gives me the option for coincident. I'm going to go ahead and click out of that. If I go to the two points, and we're going to go back to add relation. That one, okay, so it didn't pick up one of those. There it is. All right, so coincident. So both the line and the endpoint can have the uh, the same effect. So um, part of part of our process is just going to be to uh, look at those different combinations and be able to uh, to make those decisions as we're going through the process. All right, so same thing here as we're going to select and control select. And now my relation is coming up correctly and I'm getting the pop-up. So here are all of the icons. And as you drag across those, it's going to tell you horizontal, vertical, collinear, perpendicular, parallel, make equal, make midpoint, make coincident. So in this case, I want the line to be coincident. And it's not, uh, not picking it out of there. How about over here? There we go. And then notice that it jumps down, All right? So it's staying coincident with that point. And since I applied the dimension, I would really rather change dimensions out of one sketch or the other and have that geometry uh, line up correctly. All right, so same thing, we're gonna try again. And so pick the, um, the first line, control select the, uh, the end point, go to coincident that time it did it. So as my geometry goes from blue to black, those lines, those objects are becoming defined. And then one more is to select, control select, and coincident. And now I have the height. So if I grab any of the, uh, the geometry, notice it's able to rubber band to move around. And what that tells me is I think I've just about got everything that I can um, I can work with. So I'm going to go to control four, puts me into the, uh, the right plane or the right view. <clears throat> and for my dimensions then, and those little green dots, well, they're, they're there. So under the view, and I believe it's going to be, nope. There we go, hide show, which is the same as coming over here to the pull down arrow. And we have sketch relations. Oh, and it's off of the screen. So at the very bottom of that, uh, that menu is sketch relations. Let's see if we can find it here. There we go, view sketch relations. All right, so that turns off the little green dots until I select something. And then just for that object now, I have the dots or the um, the sketch relations that I'm actually uh, actually working with. All right, so I could go back up over to the command manager and and uh, select smart dimension. We can also right click. Watch out for the sketch numeric input. We'll come back to that. Uh, let's see, replace entity. No, there we go. Smart dimension. So that's put me into the dimension tool. We have 0.62 off of the back edge. Okay. And then the overall height of two and a half inches was set over here. And what do we have? 0.62 here as well. And I'm going to go ahead and put this dimension in, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, I could really make those equal. Well, the, the choice is is this going to always, oops, and that's the wrong one, so escape, <clears throat> is this always going to be equal, 
or is there a possibility as I go further into the design that those numbers will, will vary? Okay, so the overall is 2 inch. And height wise, oh, and then 0.62. Okay, so I'm putting in there control Z to get back out of that. 0 0.62. And I'm still not sure what I'm uh, I'm clicking, but new setup and uh uh gonna gonna take a little bit to uh get the feel for this. Alright, so here's one where we can select control select and I will make the two lines collinear. Keeping in mind that I also could have taken the endpoint and the line or the endpoint and the line and made those coincident. So you have different uh, different combinations to uh, to go through on those uh, those sketches. So this gets saved and I need a place to save it. So I cleared out um, my uh, my OneDrive uh, cloud folder. So we're going to uh, save. and go into OneDrive. New folder is 2018 Fall and do my SolidWorks um, assignments. Okay, so that gives it a location to go to. Advantage here is that it will be at the top or very near the top. And then part one goes to just by double clicking I can highlight over the top of it or we just backspace and this is going to be stop block and my initials and then we're going to let's fly the rest of this in so you can see the whole thing and then we'll save it all right so we're going to do this to the other seven uh, items uh, we'll take them uh, kind of slow initially going through the sketch tools, repetition, repetition, consistency, consistency, consistency. And then after we built those seven sketches, then we'll come back and we'll make these solids. Once we've made the solids, we'll put them into drawings. All right, so that's going to do it for the, um, uh, the, the first um, go around on this video. And we'll pick up with uh, item two.